let's do this fun physics problem. Uh, this is kind of a, a problem that I see show up a lot of times uh, to kind of challenge students uh, and their ideas about how to calculate the electric field. So here's the problem. It's a half ring of charge. I put a half circle. So it's a ring of radius R with a total charge uh, Q, and we want to find the electric field at the center. And this is usually done after they do, students do this, right? The full ring of charge, where the electric field is zero at the center. So it's, it's obviously not going to be zero here, but it would be zero at the center here, and then they calculate the electric field on the z-axis, or however you want to call that. Let's just review, because all these problems we set up the same way. We set them up using the electric field due to a point charge. So if I have some point charge uh, right here at a location vector rq, that's the vector location of that charge, and I want to find the electric field over here at a vector location r, oh, when I put the vector over the o, I don't know why I did that, uh, then the first thing I need to do is to find the vector from the charge to the observation location, we'll call, I'm going to call that r, and it's just going to be r o minus rq. Then the electric field E can be calculated with the field due to a point charge, but this is the vector equation, so we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, Q over R squared, and then R hat is a unit vector in the direction of R. And this allows us to have uh, a vector value there. And then if I have other charges, I just find the total electric field by adding up the electric field due to all the charges. Now remember that R hat is the vector R divided by the magnitude of R. That's the unit vector R hat. So if I put that in up here, I get a slightly better version of the electric field that I like. It looks like this, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q R over the magnitude of R cubed, right? Now, it's just a little bit easier to deal with, but that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I have R O, right? R O is the vector 0, 0, 0. Now I just need to find an expression for all these charges to get the electric field due to each of them, and then I can integrate. So let me start on a new piece of paper just because uh, I want to. So let's redraw my semicircle, half ring, whatever you want to call it. And look, I'm actually tracing over it. Okay, so I have RO. It's the vector 0, 0, 0. Now let's just pick a typical piece right here. I'll call that DQ. I'll use capital Q. What's the location of that piece? Well, we're going to need to kind of describe where it is and parameterize the whole curve. One way we can do that is by saying it's this angle theta from the y-axis. If that's the case, then RQ is going to be equal to the vector. What's the x component right here? The x component is going to be equal to negative R sine theta, right? Because if this is my x component, and then I have a right triangle. This is R, that's theta, that's sine theta. It's in the negative direction the way I have it right there. My Y component is R cosine theta, and then my Z component is zero. So, you know, it's important to kind of like not just say cosines X, sines Y, depending on how you define it, right? But now I can move my, my angle theta uh, around the circle and find any piece that I want. So by, just by changing the angle theta. Well, the next thing I need to do is to find R. R is going to be RO minus RQ. And that's pretty easy since R is 0. So this just becomes the vector R sine theta minus R cosine theta 0. So that's this vector right here, right, going this way. And you'll see it has a positive x component and negative y component, just like we have right there. Let's go ahead and find the magnitude of that, because we're going to need that. The magnitude of r is going to be the square root of r squared sine squared theta plus r squared cosine squared theta plus 0. Now, you can see that I can factor out uh, an r squared, and I get uh, r, because I pull it out of the whole square root, times the square root of sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Oh, but guess what? Sine squared cosine squared is 1, so that's just r. That's pretty nice. I just get r. Okay, now I do need one other thing. What is dq? Right? The charge in this little piece um, is part of the whole charge, 
And so we can just do kind of a ratio thing here. Um, let's just write the following. Suppose I say uh, the charge, the total charge over the total angle. And the total angle here is going to be pi, right? The angle along there. So this is the charge per angle. I know that seems kind of silly, but it doesn't really matter as long as I say this piece has the same charge per angle. So it'd be dq, and its angle is d theta, right? That's the angular size of that piece. The angular size of the whole piece is pi. So I can solve for dq. I get q over pi d theta. That's it right there. Okay, now I can write an expression for the electric field at that point due to that piece. I'm going to call this DE. It's a vector, 1 over 4 pi, epsilon naught. I'll put it as DQ right now, over the magnitude of R cubed, which is going to be R cubed. And then I have to multiply by this vector. I'm going to pull the R out. R sine theta minus cosine theta, 0. So it's a vector, right? But it does change both in direction and magnitude, no, both dual direction, um, as I move around the circle. So I'm going to actually break this. I'm going to put in my expression for dq. Let's go ahead and do that. dE equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then I have a q over pi. And then I have my d theta over r cubed r, which cancels sine theta minus cosine theta zero. So that's what I want to deal with. But I have an x component and a y component. I can treat them separately. So let's just write the x component first. I'll move this up here and we'll just do the x and then we'll do the y. Okay, so just the x is going to be dex is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I'm going to leave this other q over there, q over pi. I'm not going to cancel the, I'm not going to multiply the pi's together. And then I have d theta, and then I have r over r cubed, which is going to be r squared, and then I have sine theta. So that's the, uh, the contribution to one single piece for the electric field in the x direction. To get the total, I just add up all these pieces. I have an infinite number, which becomes an integral. So if I integrate this side, I get ex. And then I need to integrate this side. And so I'm going to pull everything that's not part of the integral out front. I get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over pi uh, 1 over r squared, the integral of sine theta d theta from theta equals 0 to pi. Well, that's not too bad. I think I can integrate that. So let's integrate. The integral of sine theta is going to be negative cosine theta. That's right. Right. So I get negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over pi 1 over r squared. I pulled the negative sign out already. Cosine theta from 0 to pi. So let's just evaluate 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over pi 1 over r squared. And then cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 0 is 1, so minus 1. So I get negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, but then there's a, a minus sign right there. So I get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2q over pi r squared. That's the x component. Let's check. Units. So this should have the same units as the electric field to the point charge. Q over epsilon naught r squared. That works. Okay, let's check um, as... See, I didn't put in... I didn't put in... Um, uh, variable there to show the distance away. So I think that's all I'm going to check right now. Yeah. Okay, now let's go and look at the y component. So the y component looks the same thing, right? We still have all that stuff. We just have a minus cosine theta. So if I put dEy, um, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over pi uh, d theta 
minus, let's put the minus for here, minus cosine theta over r squared. So I'm going to integrate both sides. I get ey is one over four pi epsilon naught q over pi r squared, the integral of negative cosine theta d theta from zero to pi. And when I integrate that, the integral of cosine theta sine theta, so I get uh, negative one over four pi epsilon naught q over pi r squared sine theta from zero to pi. But sine of pi is zero and sine of zero is zero, so I get zero. And, and that all makes sense, right? Let's go back over here. Due to symmetry, the electric field in the y direction should be zero and it should be in the positive x direction, which is exactly what we got. So a lot of times you'll see uh, a trick where they you know, just say, oh, symmetry, we cancel that. We didn't do that trick. We just did it full and we got the same thing. Uh, so this is my electric field at the center. What I wanna do now is to break this into uh, finite pieces, a finite number of pieces, and find the electric field numerically with Python. And I think it's kind of useful to do it both ways because you can kind of see the same thing. In, in Python, we can, with a numerical calculation, we can see what's going on much better. Okay, let's make this bigger. Bigger, bigger, that's good. Um, I'm gonna need some constants here. I'm gonna do numerical calculations, so I need the numbers. I need the, I'm gonna call this. This is my one over four pi epsilon naught, nine times 10 to the ninth. I need my charge. I'm gonna say charge is uh, one times 10 to the negative ninth. My radius of my circle, I'm gonna pick 0 0.1, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna pick uh, the number of pieces I'm gonna break it into, I'm gonna say is 10, when we can change that. So if that's the case, then the charge of each piece is gonna be Q over N. Uh, and now I also need the observation location. I'm gonna do this by explicitly putting that in there so that you can move the, the observation location around if you want to, because it doesn't matter, right? When we do it numerically, it doesn't matter. Uh, so now I need to, oops, I need to pick my uh, theta equals zero, d theta equals pi over n. So that's my angle that I'm gonna use to determine the location of all my spheres. I'm gonna draw all my charges as spheres. That's the first thing I wanna do. While theta is less than pi, do the following. One, create that r vector, the rq vector. I'm gonna call it rq, and it's the vector r, it's the vector, uh, I already said this before, it was negative r times sine theta. This is exactly what we had before. r times cosine theta, zero. And now I'm gonna put a sphere there. I'm not gonna give it a name, I'm just gonna give it a sphere. Sphere position equals RT, RQ, and the radius, let's say it's uh, R over 20. Now I'm gonna increase my value of theta. Theta equals theta plus D theta. And that should draw all my spheres. Let's just see if that works. And we should get 10 spheres. I'm a little nervous, I always get nervous at this part. Okay, there. So you'll notice that it started right here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We didn't get all the way down to the bottom just because of the way it spread out, right? And I mean, that's not right. And there's ways to fix that with just 10, but what if I make 100 spheres? It's not really gonna matter, right? So let's make 100 spheres. Now that looks better, let me see. So it might even still be a little off of them, but who really cares? Um, now I just need to calculate the electric field. So to do that, I'm gonna calculate the electric field due to each one of those points and add it to the total, so I need a total. So we'll start with E equals vector zero, zero, zero. Now down here, I'm going to uh, calculate R. R is equal to RO minus RQ. That's exactly what I did before. That's ex I'm just doing it numerically. Let's put space. And now I'm gonna calculate DE. DE is gonna be K times dq, oh, I use capital Q, dq times uh, r divided by the mag r cubed. Same thing I did before, same thing. Now I'm gonna add that contribution of electric field to the total, E equals E 
plus DE and I am done. So now let's go down here and print E. E equals E. And I'll give it, let's do volts per meter. And run that. And there's my electric field. It is in the X direction. The Y direction is super, super, super tiny, almost zero. But let's compare that to the value that we had theoretical. Let's calculate our theoretical version. ET, I'm looking at my equation, K times 2 times Q divided by pi times R squared. And let's print that. ET equals ET volts per meter. Same thing. Winning, right? That's called winning. Okay, there you go. Like I said, that's a common problem that comes up. A lot of people think they try to approach that by looking at the electric field due to the ring and just dividing it by two. But the electric field due to a full ring at the center is zero. So if you divide by two, you don't get that. If I did the other half, I'd get a negative. So I have two electric fields in equal and opposite directions like that. And they cancel, but just finding one of them, you actually have to integrate. So it's a really good problem. I like it a lot. Uh, I'll put a link to this code down below and hope you find that useful.